Hey all, Blunderbuss is in a pretty interesting spot right now where it is very strong versus the current meta, but mostly lacks due to the elemental aversion being present and the fire damage reduction being present that everyone is running in the fused flame of pot absorptions. This can be navigated around by changing from the typical Blunderbuss setup to running things like Frost Attunement or chain elements that are no longer fire, or things like shirking that can navigate around this. Blunderbuss is more of a sleeper weapon right now. Everyone's kind of been paying attention to fire stuff. Fire stuff, to a degree, outclasses Blunderbuss from range, but Blunderbuss has a lot better pressure from autos and is a lot better at controlling space than fire stuff, and can still be slotted to great success, and is slotted as much, if not a little bit more, than fire stuff in the current meta depending on what company that you are versus. Blunderbuss itself, if you are building around a weapon, has a very low crit damage modifier and it's something that needs to be ignored and not used. You should not be going for Vicious on this weapon, you should not be doing that sort of build in general. The build that used to be run with Vicious, where you would play for a Mortar, is just completely outclassed by Fire Staff at the moment and it does not make sense to play that build. It has, about a, it has a passive 16% in power built into the kit if you stay on the Blunderbuss, which makes Blunderbuss more of a main hand weapon to get the best util out of it as possible. And because the empowered passive on the Blunderbuss is relatively low compared to other weapons, it is something that you need to look to increase through weapon perks and things like shirking empower and rune class gems in order to get the most value out of the weapon itself. Blunderbuss is a very strong neutral pressure with the actual autos itself hitting for as much as 2,000 to 3,000 damage with a ranged attack which ma makes it online to be the strongest base neutral attack if you could consistently hit it. Has lots of strong abilities, has lots of new fortify which as is noted with the fortify changes is generally very bad and not worth playing for anymore. That typically gets cut in or order for DPS perks or more uh, or other perks that can get generally less value but are still good. And the 20% increase due to the Org Calcum cartridges not working on abilities has also increased Blunderbuss' damage by a lot. As a lot, the Thrapma Blast did receive a nerf, but it is still very, very strong, and Blunderbuss remains as one of the strongest weapons in the PvP scene. There are three main Blunderbuss subcategories that people play for, and Blunderbuss in general I think is the weapon with the most variety of builds that can be played to large degrees of success. The main ones that are present at the moment are Nukers, Zoners, and Tanks. Tanks are a class that is kind of a unicorn, doesn't really exist as much anymore. Occasionally you'll see a shot caller attempt to play a tank class from that will used to be meta because the Fortify was so good, but due to the Fortify nerfs, this class in entirety has not been played in recent wars. Nukers are typically played alongside Fire Staff, and Zoners are a class that is very, very common to see in wars. Zoners typically play to hold space, they play zone control for the back lines. occasionally they push into enemy space but their main goal is to keep the edge on lock and then launch the plague splitting grenades into clumps to help nuke those as much as possible. The current meta mostly fields zoners with companies running 2-5 to five blunderbusses that are either in light or medium that literally just play to protect healers in the back line from threats that come their way. And the main thing that you have to work around is playing around the flame absorption pots and a heavy fire resistant meta that is currently in place. You can do this with things like isotomit, but you cannot navigate around elemental aversion. This makes it really important to target people who are in light who tend to run physical aversion instead of elemental aversion because bows are more of a threat to them. So you can very easily delete things like healers with blunderbuss as long as you get around the f and navigate around the fire uh, tech that has been present by running something that does more ice damage. So slotting like a tier 2 ice gem or a rune glass gem that makes your damage 40% ice can navigate around a lot of the present resistances and actually increase your damage weirdly to a lot of variety of builds. Nukers uh, as a class in general typically play to nuke clumps. I mentioned that this is slotted along fire staff at the Mostly, there are some people who st still run light blunderbuss nukers. The main advantage of light blunderbuss as a nuker is that the grenades do increase damage to people that are higher HP, so it's really good at softening a clump and allowing your bruisers to finish those off. 
is very effective versus Zergs and Giant Clumps. So if you're on a server who tends to run more bruisers, like a triple bruiser groups or double bruiser groups, and they all stack together, this is a really, really good build that can counter those effectively, especially because Blunderbuss like, splitting grenades cannot be eaten by things like Maelstorm that fire staff abilities can be eaten by. It is very good at uh, King Clumps in general, and in order to increase that, you want to try to stack things that, and stack your Empower because Blunderbuss tends to have very low base Empower built into the kit. So you want things like Keenly Empowered, Attunement, or Shirking, and Mortal Empower or Enchanted on your Blunderbuss. Shirking is an interesting case where only will proc in the first ability, and it's pretty conditional to actually get the Shirking to proc. But if you can get it to proc and make sure it does not proc on the actual initial impact of the Blunderbuss grenade that hits a person, which is weirdly very common to do, then it could significantly increase your damage to a clump and do 40% extra damage instead of the Attunement's 14% extra damage. The Attunement tends to be more consistent, and this tends to be what is preferred, but Shirking has higher potential to nuke clumps itself, but is a lot harder to play for. Mortal Empower is something that's like kind of hard to come by at the moment. Uh, very rare, you kind of have to roll for it yourself. It can be good versus actual clumps, but it generally is not something that people prefer to run, and they'd rather go with Enchanted, which again is more consistent. Typically, the stat split that you run with this build is 200 Strength, 100 Int, and 165 Con. Some people drop the Con even lower if they're playing on Light and they're playing, a, they try to increase the Int specifically to allow their grenades to hit harder, burn to last longer if they get to 250 Int and allow their offhand weapon to do more damage. So if you're doing it, have it with an Ice Gauntlet, then your Ice Gauntlet will do a lot more damage. If you can increase that int, and you can combo that with the Blunderbuss to really soften clumps and occasionally just nuke entire clumps single-handedly. Typically, if you're playing a zoner setup instead of a nuker setup, you're playing to harass people to enter your space, you can occasionally push the corner and then try to walk into other team space. Typically, other builds are better at this. Uh, usually those builds are categorized as disruptors. Blunderbuss is not a great disruptor because it inherently it's very slow and doesn't navigate around the battlefield super well, so it's better at holding space than taking space, but it can be used to take space occasionally at times. Typically, if you're playing one of these zoner builds, you want an enchanted attunement or chain or keenly empowered weapon. The preference in terms of perk order, I would say, is attunement and then chain and then keenly empowered if you have to choose a two or three perk but if you get a chain blunderbuss which is often a lot cheaper you don't lose that much damage and it in theory could even be better damage versus people who are in your back line who don't have access to a lot of heals but it is a little bit less burst damage which is something that you typically want on a blunderbuss tanks as a whole play for util on the blunderbuss train and use the fortify to survive i wouldn't say this class isn't really is really viable at the moment due to the fortify changes, but it has been alluded to that the blunderbuss would have an increase in fortify across the board to make up for the new changes, which could make tank classes viable again. At the moment, blunderbuss has about a third of the survivability that it once had, uh, which just makes it not viable as a tank. And there's other better tank options in general that are being slotted right now, like SNS, who are using that kind of unique shot caller or IGL oriented spot in order to get better util out of a class. Typically in terms of perks that you're looking for on Blunderbuss, if you're playing a tank setup, you would go for plague splitting grenades on your actual weapon. I think with the current meta where people are playing the nuke stuff and the stuff is dying faster, you generally want to put that on your armor and stack as many DPS perks on your weapon as possible. You want five or zil, I would say five aversion. It could be elemental or physical, whatever is preferred. You just need to slot the appropriate gems to make up for whatever one that you slot against. And then in terms of your free perks, I would probably go for refreshing and plague splitting grenades. Exhaust and net shot is also super, super good, and I think should be prioritized in almost every blunderbuss build. Uh, but historically, it's a little bit less important than plague splitting grenades. If you are in a spot where you're taking a lot of 1v1 duels and not a lot of like 1v10 encounters, plague splitting grenades will be worse than exhaust and net shot, and you will really feel the impact of exhaust and net shot. There are two main blunderbuss trees that are slotted right now. One of them go plays for cooldown reduction, and then the other one plays for increased damage. I would say the one that plays for cooldown reduction is generally more popular, but the one that plays for increased damage by going to the left tree will actually 
feel like you have more individual impact from personal experience. So I would generally recommend going with the left tree passive and not really worried about the 50% occasional ability damage reduction. But if you are playing a nuker oriented class, I would say go the right tree. If you're playing more of a zoner oriented build where you're just trying to control the space, I would tend to go to the left tree. The increased damage from autos you will generally feel a little bit more than actual cooldown reduction, and this allows you to get access to some really, really good perks, like the Exhaustive Netshot perk that increases your slow duration to 7 seconds. This increased duration is not affected by freedom, and can navigate that entirely, which makes it very, very lethal to land on a melee bruiser and almost instantly forces a cleanse pop pop, or if you're in OPR or a duel scenario, basically single-handedly wins the duel if you can get that off. Some people try to even... They think that the net shot is so good that they'll try to put it on weapon. Uh, this exhaust effect was limited in a recent patch, and I wouldn't recommend doing it because you will go over that cap. But it is something that is still effective, and if you find a weapon with it, I would say don't worry about it and just pick it up. It'll, especially because they'll often be cheaper, but those weapons are generally more rare, especially because less people are rolling blunderbuss since it's less potent than it once was. That being said, it is a very sleeper build, and it's something that is very, very strong, and I would recommend trying in OPR or 3v3 for sure, and then in war is nichely slottable in spots that are used to control backlines or control gate entry points. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.